Thank you so much for stopping by the channel today. Um, I think I got a good video for you. I'm going to re be replacing the brakes and rotors on my 2017 Ford Transit van. Let me warn you, this is going to be a long video. I believe it's over an hour long. It's going to be really geared towards those of you who are looking to do this repair yourself, provide you with all the details that I use in order to execute this repair, and those of you who may want to understand what the process entails so you can determine is this something you want to even tackle yourself. So I tried to include as much detail as I could. In addition to the video, there will be a uh, process guide, a link to a process guide down below. It's meant to be a checklist, something that you can follow along step by step, print out, take to your vehicle, and check boxes as you go to help you stay organized as you tackle this repair. It'll also have a parts list, a tools list, and a supplies list of all the things that I use in doing this repair. So. I hope this video helps you out. If it does, I'd love to hear from you. Please leave a comment, hit that like button, and please consider subscribing as well. That's enough of me talking. Let's get into the show. So we're gonna chalk uh, both of our front wheels uh, just to make sure this vehicle doesn't move on us while we have it in the air. And we're gonna chalk both sides of the, of the two just to be safe. Safely support the vehicle with jack stands. to remove the caliper. The reason why you may need a, a deep socket, I'm using a 13 millimeter, is because this top uh, bolt has this stem on it. So I'm going to use a 13 to remove this one. And also this one right here, 13 millimeter. We're back. We're going to use a crescent wrench to hold uh, that square fastener in place. And what I'm, what I'm talking about here is that guy right there. It's going to want to turn on you. So we're going to get our. Uh, crescent wrench hold that in place while we back off that fastener at this point this caliper is free and you don't want it to dangle on you. So I'm gonna keep my hand right here while I get my caliper uh, hanging bracket. Caliper is free now. Again, we don't want it to hang. I'm gonna get this bungee that I used and I'm just gonna hang my caliper up here. 
caliper using this hook, this hole here, and I'm hanging it right here on the suspension securely. This is just a, a bungee cable, a heavy duty one I modified for this purpose. All right, now we have our caliper sitting to the side. Let's move on to the next step. It's also good to make note here, um, these caliper bolts are different. The top bolt has this stem on it and the bottom bolt does not. They're both a 13 millimeter. So we're gonna make sure we put the one with the stem on it on the top and we'll put this one on the bottom so that it matches the way it came off. Next step is we need to remove our caliper mounting bracket, which is this bracket right here. It's attached to the back of this housing here with 15 millimeter bolts. And let's take a look at where they are. One bolt is there, and the other bolt is going to be right here. Now the torque spec for these bolts are uh, it's pretty high. So what you may need is a cheater bar to help you break torque on these. So let's break torque on both of these bolts and remove this bracket. Okay, first up, let's go after this top bolt. Again, these are uh, 15 millimeter. Got my 15 right here. Cheater bar. I'm going down on my rotation. It's a bit much to do. So we've got our cheater bar on our uh, breaker bar. And let's go ahead and break torque on this bolt. So we've got our cheater bar on, and let's go ahead and break torque. There we go. Very good. Now we'll get our ratchet. Take this guy off. This is the bottom bolt right here, bolt right there. I'm gonna do the same thing and uh, break torque on that one. All right, now we'll go, we're situated on this bottom bolt. We have our cheetah bar. Let's go ahead and break torque on this bottom. I'll give you a close up of it so you can see. So we got break. Good deal. Let's go ahead and get our Milwaukee and bring it on out. At this point, uh, the caliper bracket is loose and it can just come on out. Like you see right here. So again, let's take a look. So let's just take a look at how this is oriented. Uh, you're looking at the outside pad, and now you're looking at the inside pad. See how that inside pad has a notch on it? And that is the surface where the uh, piston, caliper piston in right there, engages with this pad. So when we put this pad back on, we need to pay attention to that. 
this pad is oriented with the notch right here so that it can engage with that piston and also it's good to note and see how these uh that notch right here the notch is for the piston line up straight across through the opening we got to keep that in mind too on installation all right let's move on to the next step Next up, we're going to remove now the hub assembly. Um, so differential fluid is going to leak out of here once we start pulling this hub out. So I'm going to put me a drip pan right here just to catch any of the differential fluid. And I'm going to use a uh, 15 millimeter and my impact wrench to um, remove each one of these bolts. As you can see now, I ran into an issue when I was going to remove these uh, hub assembly bolts. Since I'm trying to brake torque after I remove the brake pad and the emergency brake, uh, the rotor is, is wanting to spin on me. And I, that's going to be a problem. I didn't run into this issue on the uh, passenger side, but I did run into it on the driver's side. So at, at this point, what I decided to do, it's not ideal, but what I decided to do, I wedged my breaker bar, my 3 8 breaker bar you see there in that hub assembly so it wouldn't spin on me. I was very so careful not to make contact with the ABS tone ring that's back there, but I needed something to hold that hub assembly um, while I was trying to brake torque on those bolts and that's what I decided to do. In hindsight I could have broken the bolts while the brake pad was still on, used the brakes if I needed to just to apply more pressure but as you see here that's what I decided to do and it did work. So I've been able to break torque on all the bolts. Now I'm going to use my impact to get it out of here. And hopefully you can see how I just put my uh, breaker bar in there so this thing wouldn't move. Not ideal, but it got the job done. Once we got that last one removed, you can see how the hub has just separated from the rotor. We're going to pull all our bolts right there. We're going to be replacing the bolts, so we're not going to be reusing those. So now, so we have our drip pan position, and let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, axle assembly out of here. 
So once we pull the hub assembly out, we've got a place over here prepped with our plastic uh, trash bag. And what that's gonna do is prevent any dust and debris from getting on that axle and keep it clean. So we have our dustpan position. I've got my paper towels here to wipe this axle assembly off as it comes out. So I'm gonna grab it here. Just ease this out of here. Just gonna wipe this guy down as it comes out. Just to avoid any leakage of this. So now I've taken that um, axle assembly and like I've said before, I've just set it on a plastic bag so it's not on my garage floor and trying to keep any dirt, debris and, and any uh, junk from getting on that axle right there. Next step, uh, while the differential fluid leaks, uh, we need to remove our rotor. And the way this rotor comes off is that you have got to position it to where this window is above this guy to pull off. It's not going to come off like this. You got to rotate it. And um, some of you may be able to rotate it by hand with a little wiggle. So let's get this position so we can get this uh, rotor off of here. So just hold it. It'll help me out a little bit. Got my plastic uh, dead blow hammer, and I'm gonna just knock on this uh, hub to rotate it as I pull it right here. In which you can see it's moving that hub. There we go. So we've been able to move this hub now to where it's positioned and we can just walk the rotor off. So let's go ahead and do that. Gonna grab the left side and the right side here. And just play with it a little bit and just walk it off. That's our prize, rotor is off. So here's our brake fluid reservoir and let's go ahead and get this uh, cap removed so that when we push this piston back if any brake fluid goes out it has somewhere to go so removing this and there's also a gasket here I'm gonna remove as well so I've removed the cap removed the gasket we're gonna close the hood and get back to work so this is the caliper wine bag tool that I'm using. Um, I picked this up not too long ago. They do rent these out and um, not rent them out. You can borrow them from uh, your local parts store. Um, you leave your identification card and they'll let you borrow it for free. And when you come back, you get your ID and you may have to put down a deposit. Um, so this is the tool I'll be using <coughs> um, for this specific tool set. It is a number six I'm using and if you need to know this is the actual set I have it's the Maddox set I picked this up at Harbor Freight um, they're not paying me to say that uh, so yeah yeah so you don't need this particular tool set this tool kit um, you just need something that's gonna wind this caliper back if you need a specific kit, I'll link in the description below some kits that are uh, comparable to that one. So, at this point, what we need to do is the way that 
the way this kit works is that these two notches need to engage with this piston and we're going to wind it back. Um, the direction that you go is stamped on the caliber. You see that? The direction of that arrow is the direction you want to turn this piston. I'm on the driver's side. In this case, it wants us to go clockwise. So we're going to turn this piston clockwise to get it wound back. Once I get the tool situated, I'll be right back. Let's go ahead and get our tool situated here. So I'm going to situate it just like this. And I need to take this all the way down. Like so. So once I have it situated, now I need to tighten it up so that this plate um, sits against these caliper fingers. So I'm turning it in this direction, counterclockwise. So now, remember the direction we've got to turn this caliper. The arrow's pointing this way, so let's turn our handle here clockwise. So, I'm going to get me a length of pipe here to get a little bit more torque on this. I'll be right back. So, using our length of pipe here, we're able to get a bit more torque and start this thing going. So now, for every turn with this model, with every turn you do, you're going to have to reposition this to keep it tight. It may, it may uh, take you a bit of muscle and time to get this thing wound back, so don't be alarmed if it takes you a while. But the goal is to get this thing turned to the point where it bottoms out, to the point where this is flush with this surface. So you got a lot of room to go here. At this point, this caliper is bottomed out. I can feel it. It's important you want this caliper positioned in such a way where these notches are lined up and split the gap in this opening. That's where you want to make sure that's positioned because that's going to go on that brake pad. So make sure you have that uh, when you're done, your piston should look like that. Okay, we'll be back.
At this point, we're just gonna spray this uh, surface down with some brake clean. This is the 80th stone ring back here. Let's just go ahead and get cleaned up pretty good. Remove any, get all this brake dust off back here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead too and spray these outer surfaces here. I'm gonna cover this up with a little rag because I want to get it in there with the kind of wood on this way. Get any holes right here, blow out these holes. Brake clean is 14 ounce cans too. I'm not sure what I had down there, make a note of that. Yep. Rain on it now. This is good, it helps prevent some of the squeaks you have. And while we're here, I'm gonna also spray off this, uh, give it a good wipe. Get this crud off here. Paying attention to, to these surfaces where our rotor is going to mount to. I'm just giving them a good wipe. And also, since I'm over here, let's go ahead and just spray down this caliper. dry and we'll be right back. So at this point now we need to remove our old uh, brake pads from our caliper mounting bracket. Uh, they may be stuck on there pretty good uh, so you may want to give it a little wiggle back and forth in order to get these uh, old pads out of here. If you look at this uh, inside pad, you can see where it makes contact uh, with the caliper piston right there. You see the impression on that back so I'm pad. I'm just taking my hammer here and just popping, getting this pad out of here. There we go. We've got the old pads out. Move these to the side. can just take a look at our caliper mount. Here's the hardware, the tabs, the shims that are on here. And just make a note how these are oriented. See how this tab, this ramp, um, faces the outside so you can slide the pads on there. So just take a look at that and make a mental reference of how this is noted or go back and replay the video so that you can see that when you're putting it back on. So let's go ahead and pull these off of here. Just lifting, putting my finger right there, pulling these off. And um, if you buy a decent set of pads, it should come with new hardware, which mine, uh, my new pads do have new hardware. If you your pads didn't, you may have to, you're gonna have to reuse those or buy you some new ones. They do sell uh, a little kit where you can get new hardware as well. If that's what you need to do. So let's go ahead and remove these. Yep. Those have been removed. So this is how your bracket is gonna sit on that wheel. So it's gonna slide into the rotor like this. So this would be the top and this is the bottom. When you pull your caliper pin out, the pin at the top has like a little nylon almost like little nylon bushing thing on there. So just keep that in mind that it is, this is the pin that actually goes on the top. And if you go to the bottom pin, it does not have that. So let's set our two pins to the side and then we're going to clean up this oh yeah so what you can do this um, 
this pin with the nylon bushing is going to go on the side that has the number stamped on it. So that's the hole that that pin goes in. Okay, make note of that. Let's go ahead and clean this up. We'll be right back. I've actually used, uh, I think, two cans of, I've used one can of 14-ounce um, brake cleaner already. And now this is my second can I'm about to use. So about two 14-ounce cans of uh, brake cleaner for both sides is what I'm thinking. Okay. So let's move our pins to the side. We'll get those later. Go ahead and spray this down. Got some cardboard under there to help catch some of this. It's raining the holes. Right. Now we want to get our wire brush. Start brushing this off. Paying close attention to these surfaces here. These surfaces right here, where the uh, hardware is going to go, and where those pads ride. Get my wire brush, and you see that? Just cleaning that up there. Now let's go hit this other side. Again, see what's left over. So let's give this a good wipe. Let's see how we're looking. Wiping it down now. Coming back here. See, there's a little bit of a little bit of an elevated surface there, and a little bit of one here. You can see that. I'm gonna get a little sandpaper and a screwdriver to help knock that down a bit and go over it with some sandpaper. You want to get those surfaces as smooth as you can. Okay, so I'm back. Got my screwdriver here, and what I'm gonna do is just Try to remove see some of that trash is getting removed right there. See that? Let's remove some of that, some of that material from the shells. Yeah. I'm just moving some of this extra material from the pads and the shims that came on here, just getting that clean. Okay, now we got that clean, let's give it another spray. Let's give it, let's give it another wipe down. of sandpaper and get this surface nice and smooth. And this is just a piece of sandpaper. In my case, I'm using a, what is this? This is just some 80 grit sandpaper. So that's the finished product there, cleaned it out, went over it with some sandpaper, and now let's move on to the next step. Alright, so we have our top and bottom caliper slide pins, and let's go ahead and give them a good spray, uh, spray clean. Yeah, let's 
getting some of that old grease off of there. Wipe those down. All right, so those look good. So we've got our cal caliper uh, pulled off. So we have removed. This is how you remove the this uh, metal plastic grommet. Don't pull from down here. Simply push from right here and get it off that neck. That way you don't tear it. So simply push from right here and put it to the side. So let's go ahead and clean this off. Again, get some of that old grease off of there. So Next thing we need to do with oil, we need to put some grease on our pins and put some grease on our caliper mounting bracket. All right, so I'm using my synthetic uh, brake caliper grease. I found that this works well. It also doesn't deteriorate any of the um, plastic and the rubber uh, bushings you see. So I've had real good success with this. What I want to do now is get a nice little amount and I want to put it on all the surfaces where these shims and these brake pads are going to sit. Because what I've found in doing my brake jobs is that if you want to eliminate squeak any metal to metal contact try to put some lube on there and that's what I'm doing putting a good amount there let's flip it to the other side get us another dip get us a nice little dip put it right there also right over here Again, anywhere I have a metal to metal connection contact surface I just want to put some of this on here just to avoid any avoid the squeaks there we go ahead and get our shims installed go ahead and install our shims and remember the way these install you want this ramp here to be facing the outside so this ramp here needs to face the outside because that's where the pad slides into when I say ramp I'm talking about this so for this one we're just going to pop it right there. See how that tab is on the outside? For the bottom one, yep, this bottom one is going to go right there. There we go. Should we got that on there good? do so that's the bottom one there remember facing the outside let's go to this side here this one here yep that looks good Let's go to our top one, and that's going to be right there. Let's go ahead and get that on there. There we go. See that? All your tabs need to be facing the outside. 
See that one there? And that one there. Now, all right. now I'm going to dab a little bit more of the lube on here where these, uh, where our, uh, where our brake pads are going to slide. I'm just putting a little bit of lube on here where our pads will make contact with this. Again, just to avoid, to avoid the squeaks. So I'm just putting a dollop of brake lube all around there where our pads will contact. Try to clean it up here a little bit. Just try to clean it up here a little bit. So just putting some lube on all the sides where they make contact. All right, next up, next up. Let's go ahead and uh, get our pins lubed up and get those installed. <laughs> Remember, this is our top pin. This is the pin that has that plastic uh, piece on the end. So, what I'm going to do is simply just give it a wipe down right here. Don't need a whole lot on these. Just get them nice and coated up there. Get my piece right here, pop it on there, then make sure it goes over the head, work it back and forth a little bit, make sure that's free and clear, which it is. Make sure that piece is make sure it's going free and clear, not sticking. Yes, that feels good. Let's move, push that to the side. Let's get our other one here. Got our other pin. Let's go ahead and get that lubed all the way up real good. Get our other piece. Push that on there so it goes over the head. Right there. Just work it back and forth. Make sure it looks good. Alright, that looks good. Let's move on to the next step. First thing, we're going to start off with our top hole. Remember, this is the top hole for me. I've got numbers right here that I found as a reference point. So, stuff I'm going to take is get my, get some of my grease. And just put a little bit in that hole. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. We've already got this thing lubricated, so it, it shouldn't be bad at all. Put a little bit of grease in there. Then we want to take that guy. Pop them in there. Then I'm just working it back and forth here to make sure I've got good range of motion. And that is going all the way in. Which it is. So that looks good. So let's do the same thing with this one here. Taking my grease. My grease. And let's put it some in the hole right there. Work it in there. Taking my pin, putting my pin down in there. And I'm checking the range of motion. Make sure it's good. Make sure it's not sticking. Because that's where that caliper is gonna ride. Make sure your brakes are smooth there. Okay, let's set this to the side. For this step, we need to uh, wipe down our rotor. These rotors are going to ship with some oil-like residue on them to prevent them from rusting. And we want to get that off of there. And if we don't get it off of there, it could contaminate our brake pads. Let's go ahead and get that done. Simply remove my rotor. Set it back on the car. And I'm going to spray it off. Get some brake cleaner on both sides. If you don't have any brake cleaner, I've had good success uh, cleaning these off with some Dawn soap and water and wiping them down. You just want to make sure you have something that can cut through the grease and oil that these things ship with. Alright. See some of oil coming off of there. So, I'm going to get me a clean... Set of paper towels here. And let's wipe it. Let's 
paying real close attention to that surface where those brake pads are going to contact. Got it nice and clean. Got all that oil, oil, that oil off of there. Got it nice and clean. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so what I want to do now is put a little bit of anti-seize on this rotor, focusing on points where it's going to contact the hub. I'm doing this because I just don't. This is a metal-to-metal -metal contact, and I just want to avoid any issues with it getting stuck and seizing anything like that. So, what I'm gonna do is I've got some anti-seize and I have a Q-tip. And I am going to apply a ever light thin coat right here. I am not getting any on this surface, okay? Do not put any anti-seize on this surface here where your pads make contact. I'm not even putting it in the holes. I'm putting it right here on the outside. You don't want to get this on the surface. It can contaminate your pads. And then you'll have to wipe it off and re-clean all over again. So make sure that does not get on your pads. So just rubbing it in right there. Just getting another dip. Coming in right here. Again, not even getting it in the hole. Don't want to do anything to mess up our torque spec. I'm just putting it on the outside. It's optional. If you feel like you don't need to do it, then don't do it. But I'm doing it. Now, let's go ahead and put our rotor on set up right here Get you set up right here so I'm gonna go ahead and put the rotor on so I'm holding it here and in order for it to go on you gotta line it up with your grooves right there then once it goes on it slides in place right there see that it slides in place and we just put the anti-seize on, anti-seize on just to prevent this and this from getting seized together. That's all. That'll help us get it removed next time. So we just slid that on there. Let's move on to the next step. At this point, I'm just looking over my surface here, wiping it down, making it sure it's nice and clean and we don't have anything on there. All right. So using our mini hook, let's go ahead and remove this O-ring. This is our mini hook we're gonna use. Now, we're simply just gonna take it, lift up on it like so, give it a little twist, and pull this off. To remove the o-ring and just slide it off I'm gonna slide this off set this to the side so you don't get this can set this to the side so you don't get this confused mixed up with your new one okay so we're gonna set this over here to the side with the kit so what we're gonna do is just slide this on here and while we have it off let's wipe off just wiping off some of this residual down here 
Got our new roll ring, and we're just gonna slide this on like so. Here's a close up of how that looks. And you just want to make sure that O-ring is in that valley all the way around. So just run your finger around it. Make sure it's seated well in that valley. Make sure it's seated all the way around. Now let's go ahead and install our hub and axle assembly. Um, what I want to do now is lube up this O-ring. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this differential liquid take some of this differential liquid that's pulled up and I'm just going to lubricate all around my o-ring here. Taking it, just giving it a nice lube all around it. Just lubing it up all around here so it doesn't, doesn't go in dry. Now, let's go ahead and get this put in. Take our time. Push it straight in, and you noticed on the end of that thing there were some splines. So once we get it here, I'm pushing down on it a little bit. And now here I'm just turning it so it lines up and pushing it. In. It's just that easy. And now just line it up on the holes right there. Okay, and we'll be right back. Next thing we're going to do is install the hub assembly bolts. <coughs> Ford recommends changing these whenever you do this uh, procedure. And that's what we're going to do. This is the part number of what we're using. Some dormant aftermarket hub bolts. So let's get these put in. Now, since we don't have the brake, emergency brake on here, we're not going to be able to torque it down the spec until we put the brake caliper on. And apply some pressure to it otherwise it's just going to spin off so we're not going to do that so what we will do is put them in and just put them in and snug them up so i'm just finger tightening always want to finger tighten first if we get on here with the tool right off the bat we run the risk of cross threading these bolts and you don't want to do that so it was always good practice to get these bolts started by hand, regardless of what you're doing. I'm a believer in that, to always start your bolts by hand. Something my grandfather taught me as a boy growing up. He passed away a couple years ago. Man, I miss him every day. I learned so much from that man. And that's one thing he taught me at a very young age. Son, always tighten up your bolts by hand first so you don't cross there. Okay? Bolts are tightened by hand. I've got a 15 here. I'm just going to snug them up with my Milwaukee here. You can use a regular ratchet if you, if you want to. Don't have to use this. If you use a regular ratchet, it may spin on you a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my Milwaukee just to snug it up. I'm gonna snug them up in a star pattern. Start with this one, bring it in. You can go to this one, then go back to this one. Go to this one. Go to this one. That's the star pattern. This one, this one, this one, this one, yep. So, just snug them up, that's all.
Next up, we're going to install our caliper mounting bracket. Uh, Ford recommends replacing your caliper mounting bolts, and that's what we're going to do. And we're using these Raybestos, and here's the part number. So now, go back and get that caliper bracket that we cleaned off before and set to the side. And here are the two bolts uh, that come with it. You see that they already have the thread sealing on there. And they are the same bolt, so it doesn't matter what goes on the top or the bottom. So let's go ahead and get this caliper put on. So let's go ahead and get our caliper put on. This is our caliper. Gonna go on like so. So at this point, I'm just putting my caliper bolts in here, trying to get this bottom one. up down here let's see there we go top one going in again finger tight first so just making sure they're both in there finger tight and they are some of the brake lube got on the caliper a little bit let's go ahead and wipe that off just got my paper towel and got my brake clean just wiping it off that surface there now we're going to go ahead and tighten up the caliper bolts the torque spec on these is caliper yeah these are the caliper mount bolts this torque spec is 85 foot pounds I'm going to go ahead and get them cinched in with my Milwaukee. This is a 15 millimeter. So just bringing that one in. And let's go down to the bottom and bring it in with the Milwaukee. Okay. So I've got my torque wrench here. And I'm going to go ahead and get it set up to... 85. I'll get this dialed in here. We're going to turn it until the neck breaks on it. Yep, 85 foot pounds. Now let's go ahead and get this bottom one uh, torqued down to 85 foot pounds as well. Got you positioned right there. It's 85 right there. Next step is we want to install our brake pads. So I've got the brake pads here. 
Remember, this is the one that goes on the caliper since it's notched. So, let's go ahead and put a little bit of a brake lube on these edges here. Put a little bit of lube right there on the tip. Then a little bit on this other side. There we go, both sides. Do the same thing on this one. Don't want to get it on the brake pad surface. Just a little on the tip. Okay, right there. Very good. Now let's go ahead and put the outside pad on. This is gonna be our outside pad right here. This one here. So I'm going to start at the top, kind of get it situated, and go to the bottom. See that at the bottom. All I'm doing is just getting it pressed in there, put on. Very good. That's our inside, outside pad. Let's move on to the inside. All right. So now let's go ahead and put our inside pad in. This notch here needs to face the outside. So I'm coming in here. back on this tab and push back on this back tab get that in there all right there we go once you get everything installed you should be looking at something that looks like that that's the front and that's the back So let's go ahead and add some lube uh, to this caliper before we put it on. First, let's go after this piston. This piston is going to make contact with the inside pad. So let's go ahead and lube it up real good. And next, let's get these fingers too. Uh, these fingers are going to be what uh, make contact with the outside pad. So again, trying to lube up those contact points from metal and metal. going to go ahead and put some uh, thread sealant on our bolts, on our caliper bolts here. We're using the blue removable thread sealant. So let's put a little bit right there and then put some right there. There we go. I always like to take them and kind of do this number here to make sure it's a good good amount all over. Now, let's go ahead and get our caliper installed here. I'm gonna have my bolt ready. Remember, this is the bolt with the stem off that came off the top with the stem on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and have this in my hand when I put this on here. Let's remove the hook here. Gonna slide right there. Push it down a little bit. There we go. So it should go right in. You shouldn't have to force it. If you force have to force it, then you need to go back and take a look at some stuff. Okay. So 
now that we have it in, I'm just tightening that first bolt and get it started by hand. Remember, always hand tighten. Then I've got my bottom bolt here. So I'm down here at the bottom, and what I want to do is get this guy rotated up a little bit. Get this guy rotated up. And once he's rotated up, I'll take this bolt, get it started in here. Remember, always hand tight. Yeah, very good. Hand tighten. Just hand tight. Yep. Hand tighten. Okay. I'll talk to you about it. Okay, we're gonna tighten up our uh, caliper bolts. Slide pins are their bolts right here. Um, I'm gonna use my Milwaukee to tighten them up, and we're going for uh, 23 foot pounds is the final torque. But I'm just gonna use this to bring them down. If you're tightening them up, you may need to use this to grab a hold of that head while you're doing it. But let's take a look and see if this thing even spins up. Yes. All right. That's that. Now we're gonna go to the bottom here and do the same thing. So we've gotten our torque wrench and we tighten it up to the correct torque spec. That's the top one. And that's the bottom one now. You see we've got our torque wrench set to 35 foot pounds. Just double checking it. Let's go ahead and torque it down. Two, three, four, ooh, five. So we're at the second stage of our torque sequence on our uh, hub assembly. And now Ford wants you to go an additional 70 degrees. So what we're gonna do now is take our nail polish or a um, white marker and we're gonna mark a reference point on each one of our bolts.
So using our, so we, these bolts have, each one of them has points on the head. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are three points on the head. Each point is equally spaced. So each point represents 60 degrees. And we need to go 70 degrees. So what that simply means is that we're gonna turn this bolt so that this point is slightly past this, slightly past it, and that's gonna be our 70 degree mark. All right, let's go ahead and get that done and we'll be back. So what we're gonna do now is take our ratchet. I'm using a half inch. It's giving me a bit more uh, torque on this. And I'm just gonna turn each one of these bolts until it's past that line, like we said, slightly past that now line, 70 degrees. So again, I'm gonna start with this one, go to this one, go to this one, this one and this one, using the star pattern. Let me do that and I'll be right back. did our first one and that's how it looks remember our mark was over here and this is that adjacent head and I just came a little bit past it now I'm gonna do the same thing for all bolts but do it in a star pattern So we ran into an issue where we couldn't uh, finish our torque sequence. This hub was moving on us. So what we've done is we've lowered the other side of the vehicle down. So that tire's down, giving us some more resistance. And now we're gonna come here and finish our 70 degree torque sequence on these bolts. It's good. In our torque sequence we did that one that one's good now let's go to this one just put a little what I'm doing is putting a little mark on my socket so I know how far that head has to turn so I can just see it turning So I don't turn it too much. There we go. Turn that one. So we've done that one looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Let's go up to this one here. So I'm finding my mark on my socket, lining it up here, and I'm watching it turn to make sure I don't go too far. There we go. That's a good one. 70 degrees. Our mark was there. 
and we went a little bit past it. We were able to do it, lowered the vehicle on the other side. That gave us a bit more resistance. And remember our dot was here, so that's that looks good. That's slightly past it. This one is slightly past. This is slightly past. This one is slightly past. And this one's slightly past. Very good. up using the star pattern. Yeah, put back on. Because I just these go into your lugs. Find a lug, put it in there, then the rest should be. So you have to install that. You just find where one of these lugs go over, pop it in there, and then it'll find its way on there. Remember to reinstall your brake uh, brake cap. Critical step you don't want to forget is before you start the car or go anywhere, make sure you tap your brake pedal a few times to build pressure back up in the system. So you want to hit this thing until you have a hard brake pedal. Don't forget to do that. So next up, let's go ahead and remove our uh, our last jack stand. Just 
jacking it up until my jack stand over there clears, which is half has. Let's go get there, get it out the way. So we have our jack stand out the way. Let's go ahead and look around, see if we left anything under the vehicle. Let's go ahead and lower it. Nice and slow. There we go. Perfect. And then we use a piece of wood there to protect the differential. So now we're down. Let's go ahead and get our wheel chocks rolling. Feels good. Um, just going up and going up the highway here, hitting the brakes when I can, just to make, just to get them seated and make sure everything's good. Don't want any funny business. So that's what I'm doing now. Appreciate you all watching. The nighttime kind of caught me. It took me a bit, a bit, bit of time. I was doing the procedure and I was recording trying to give you all all the details of the repair so it took me a little bit longer um, to do it but i think it's all worth it if i could help somebody else out it's totally worth it so it feels good i'm just riding get up here and turn around and head back home thank you all so much for watching i'm also going to put together a uh, a checklist that goes with this video so i'm also going to include a um, parts list you need tool list parts tools, supplies, torque specs for your fasteners, and a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure. Now, it's it's a it's, going, it's intended to be a companion guide to go with the video, so I'll try to list some of the bullet points, some of the steps we follow, but you may need to refer back to the video to, uh, to get some additional detail and context. And I apologize for the light, y'all. It's, it's nighttime out here. So, so happy I got this repair done. This is one actually I haven't put off. Um, I, I was doing some research into what it would take to do it. I mean, I've done traditional brake jobs before, but nothing to where you would have to remove an axle, you know, to, to change some brake pads and rotors. I was like, what? What is Ford thinking? But after studying, researching it, and uh, getting into it, it wasn't that bad. If this video helped you out, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. I'm just shy of 400 subscribers now. I'm really trying to get my subscriber count up to 1,000, um, and I can do that with your help. So that'd be a huge blessing to me. If y'all can do that for me, I'd appreciate it. Hope this video helped you out. Have an awesome day. Thanks for watching.